Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. Welcome, I'm Bruce Schwartz. I have a space channel. I just recently got a big telescope thanks to the raised funds from this community. They raised money for the big telescope, a 14 inch Celestron HD telescope. It's going to do a lot of magic. This is Archimedes Crater. Is it not beautiful? The surface of the sidewall of Archimedes. Let's talk a little bit about Archimedes Crater. Archimedes Crater, very interesting crater uh, on the surface of the moon. The diameter of Archimedes is the largest of any crater on the Mare Imbrium. The rim has a significant outer rampart brightened, like we're seeing here, with ejecta, they say, and the upper portion of a terraced inner wall, but lacks the ray system. This uh, crater actually lacks the ray system associated with younger craters. A triangular promontory extends 30 kilometers from the southeast of the rim. But let's talk about something even more interesting about um, Archimedes Crater. There has been a landing there in 1959, the Luna 2 probe um, between Archimedes and Autolycus. It's the crash site, the actual crash site of the Soviet probe Luna 2. This was the first craft to reach the surface of the moon landing on September 13th, 1959. The way people are perceiving the surface of the moon and missing out these structures. People ask me, I have friends, they all say that anyways, I have friends that have gigantic telescopes and they're not seeing this. Okay, I understand your point with the giganticism that you're trying to uh, mention and trying to exaggerate the sense to uh, make me wake up to your question, but I understand what you're asking me. It's the same error as everyone does when they're looking at a plant. That simple. I'll take a plant, a natural plant, as an example. A natural plant, when it gets sick, will have uh, little uh, spiders at times on it. You won't see them because they're so small. But if you look with a magnifying lens on a plant, you will even see the hair-like strands leaving the stem of a plant. You will see more detail, etc. Well, it's the same thing as what I'm doing. It's the same thing as um, advancing into the photos. So your friends with the gigantic telescopes, well, they have even better photos than me if they were to process them and to look at them. And the processing is with your eyes. That's what I'm telling you to process. Process the image with your eyes. You'll see everything is there. To the right of Archimedes, you could also see objects, anomalies on the surface and lots of them. It's just absolutely exquisite to see once you get in really close. There's different ways of looking at it. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show all the accumulated ways that I had looked at uh, Archimedes Crater, the beautiful colors on the surface, whatever anomalies uh, may be there, the way it's constructed, the higher wall of ejecta. Now listen, when they talk about a high wall, they're talking about a high wall. This is ridiculously high. And you can see um, uh, the emanating colors wanting to come out of the bloody photo here, uh, literally on the edge. It's the way it's formed and shaped, guys. This is what I'm trying to show you. The way the edges are, uh, formed and the way we see straight lines cutting across like this it's absolutely ridiculous that these objects could be there only the outlines are perceived once you tamper with the contrast enhance maybe more than once you'll see other objects and structures come out this always reminds me of looking through a bloody glass, some kind of a field or force field or whatever it may be, energy field that is causing us um, to see an entire surface. You know, people tell me it's atmospheric disturbance. Okay, well now you can complain that it could be this. You know why? Because we're seeing a whole area that's blue. But when different structures are different colors, don't tell me it's atmospheric disturbance. It can't be. Again, piping, structuring objects some look symmetrical tunnelization it looks like a massive processing or filtration system or uh, connecting lanes 
uh, they go left and right. It's like a grid with buildings all interconnected over top like a frame or a shell over top of the surface of the moon. This is the high wall of Archimedes Crater, all the time that we're looking at right now still. And the beautiful anomalies on the surface, beautiful color emanating from the surface, the ejecta that everyone says is ejecta. Look, look at it and look at it properly. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to hate looking at it because it's so hard to bring down the light. But when you do, when you clarify an area, go back through other photos to be sure that it's not aberration. And it's very easy to see these bloody structures are really there, whether they're anomalies or structures. I'm fascinated by the way every um, elevated level is formed, the shapes and ridges. Many times it reminds me of our, in Arizona desert, uh, the certain high red rocks, you know, this is what I, I'm taking note of. This is what I'm looking at. Uh, different kinds of rocks on the lunar surface could be also reflecting it. Even a couple of community members have even mentioned that several times, which is it could possibly be very plausibly true. A very porous surface when you're looking at Archimedes' higher wall here. And look, the blue line. that It's thick, okay? It's there. And it's over top of objects. And if you look closely, there's even smaller objects there. Bumps. Very symmetrical. By the thousands, guys. To the east of Archimedes Crater, all these other buildings and structures, I assure you, they are all there. I've shown them on my videos. I'm going to continue showing even more. We can see from Archimedes, east of Archimedes, Eratosthenes Crater, the Apennine Mountains going up north. As you go northwards from Archimedes Crater, you're heading towards Plato Crater, Merimbrium. You're going up to the north side of the moon. And from Archimedes to the top side of the moon, there are hundreds of thousands of structures uh, with the mechanical devices and objects, possibly in the near millions of structures and objects. Now say to yourself, if there could be a million structures and objects in an area, a small area of the moon, could you imagine how many uh, people do or would have inhabited that area and how many they would have been as an entirety on the surface of the moon. It's unimaginable. Every time a structure, anomaly, building, or whatever it may be is found on the surface of the moon, it's um, put away and classified and not talked about, not public-wise. Anyways, this is Tycho Crater colors around Tycho Crater, beautiful colors. Tycho Crater, you see how it's elevated, the back, it's very high up and descending levels. Well, the white ejecta part, again, has many uh, pipe and tunnel structure-like objects. If you have a magnifying lens, take a look at this photo, pause it. The moon has chicken pox in this area. Filled with bumps everywhere and very geometrical shapes. Line of toothpaste, city, I call it. Here an x-ray, beautiful view. We're gonna pan down to Tycho Crater and take a look around Tycho Crater. Now, you know how you see it regularly, uh, the gray crappy regular telescope footage. You know, it looks like white cobweb spider-like uh, strands, right? Well, look at it now. It looks more like a, a overlapping of, again, different elevated levels and layers with uh, more anomalies. It's looking at the surface differently. That's all I'm doing. But look at the Tycho Crater and look inside of it. Um, that object or line that's leaving it. These, for, uh, so long me, I find they are corridors or paths. Look at Kepler right beside to the left of Copernicus here. You can see again the surface of Kepler Crater is another amazing region to, to view. Mare Serenitatis, see the line going through it. Uh, the gray patch on top, beautiful blues at the bottom, anomalies, wall-like objects at the bottom of Mare Serenitatis, Bessel Crater, uh, right in the line, dead center of Mare Serenitatis, where you see that white line of supposed ejecta. Apennine Mountains coming up here. Uh, we're going to go see Archimedes Crater, exactly where it is, and um, I'll show you here up with a star as we're coming down here. Radisthenus Crater, just at the bottom of Montes Apenninus, that white line that goes up there. 
um, a lot of anomalies. There's a radicinus in the brackets right there. We're coming down here, seeing colors again, all the time on the surface of the moon. And as we're gonna pan down here, we're gonna take a nice look at where exactly Archimedes Crater is. This is where it's all happening. Philolos Crater, an astronomer suggested, there it is, Archimedes Crater, um, over top, back, over side of Plato Crater towards the north side is probably where uh, the moon base would be. It was a suggestion, but again, they said that they're waiting for lava tubes, right? Looking for lava tubes or that they had found one. Let's just wait and see what they're going to do because it's, you know, I think the moon could be a meeting place for several types of species. It really is possible, you know. People have to stop getting mad at the hypotheses. Look up the term. This is what I'm here for, okay? No matter what it is, it doesn't matter what it is. It's something that's up there on the surface of the moon that was constructed. WSO YouTube channel. Check it out. 